Hello world, it's the 29th of April 2024 and this is my astrological forecast for the month of May 2024. Uh, first couple of things first of all, uh, I'm just back from the other side of the world and a number of you commented on whilst I was out there on the on the quality of what I was doing at both Penny Thornton and Rick Levine. So thank you for those comments and there's going to be a lot more collaborations in the near future. Let's get on to May because April is the most bonkers month that it's been for years. May is going to be a bit easier. When I say easier, it's not going to be sweetness and light, but it's going to be less charged, less manic. And it's still not going to be easy because this year isn't easy. So let's have a look. What's going on during May? Well, the first thing is that as soon as we get into the start of May, Pluto stands still and starts going retrograde. And Pluto is directly impacting on those of you born in the first couple of days of Aquarius and the first couple of days of Leo. And if you're, if you're one of those people and you're not feeling Pluto this year, then you must be numb from a neck up because there's a lot of intensity, extremes and big changes going on. This is people born in the last day of Cancer and Capricorn and the first couple of days of Aquarius and Leo. Neptune's getting ready to move into the final degree of Pisces, but it won't move into Aries this year. That's next year. Uranus, free of Jupiter's uh, attention, is now getting ready to be really beginning to accelerate as it gets into mid-Taurus. And Saturn is now in the middle of Pisces. So all of these big planets are kind of jockeying for position in a way that's going to set the scene for the rest of the year. Jupiter is now approaching the end of Taurus, and as we get towards the very end of this month, it's going to move from Taurus into Gemini for the first time in 12 years. This is going to have a big impact on those of you born in the last few days of Taurus and the first couple of days of Gemini and the first couple of days of Sagittarius. And there's nothing negative here, but at the very end of May, Jupiter's going to sextile Neptune. That's going to bring a kind of window of opportunity for... Uh, an element of growth in spirituality, a, a kind of uh, a, a blend, if you like, between humour and empathy, and um, that's actually quite nice. Jupiter's also going to be warming up into a lovely trine with Pluto at the very start of June, but we'll start feeling that at the end of May. So at the end of May, globally, this is actually looking rather nice, and it's suggesting that politically and economically we may well see quite a few interesting developments at the end of this month that's going to make a lot of people think, oh, well, maybe something positive is happening as we get into the middle of 2024. Mars. Mars moves into Aries on the 30th of April, and Mars will spend the entire month of May in Aries, its own sign. But Mars is going to be a wild card. It's not affecting Saturn or Uranus or Neptune or even really Pluto, let alone Jupiter. So Mars, Mars in Aries is dynamic, projective, assertive, rash, impulsive, headstrong. Mars is in its own sign, and he's not being affecting any of the outer planets. So there's going to be wild card, random moments of total bonkers craziness, which you can only say, well, that's Mars in Aries for you. But they're, un they're likely to be sudden flashes, sudden moments, rather than the long drawn out things. Venus is going to spend most of the month in Taurus, during which time it will conjunct Uranus and Jupiter. And indeed, it will conjunct Jupiter at 29 degrees of Taurus, particularly around the um, 22nd, 23rd, 24th of May. So this is going to have a lot of impact on the Arab world, um, it's particularly going to affect people who are suffering with eye issues, but this is only for a couple of days around the 23rd, 24th of May, and it's a time where there can be the potential for just a little bit of over-the-top, over-indulgence, over-expectation, over-reaching. Mercury has stopped going retrograde. It stopped going retrograde a couple of days ago, and now it's beginning to move forward in Aries. It will leave Aries, it will leave Mercury retrograde shadow around the 14th of this month, and then it will leave Aries around the 15th, 16th of this month and spend the second half of the month in Taurus. 
And um, Mercury's being relatively quiet. It will end the month conjunct Uranus, but that's not a major big deal. I don't expect any mercurial problems apart from a, perhaps one to do two day session around the 16th and 17th when it will square Pluto. But then we get to the sun and the moon. Firstly, we're looking at the new moon in Taurus on the 8th of May. This will be at 18 degrees of Taurus. So it's going to be loosely conjunct Uranus, but very strongly sextile Saturn. Saturn and Uranus are not good friends. I mean, they're father and son, and Saturn castrated his father. So, you know, they don't get on. But with the new moon on top of Uranus being the activator, activating Saturn being the recipient of the energy, and a sextile between the two I would be representing a kind of window of opportunity linked by the new moon, it suggests to me that as we get into that new moon period around the 8th, there's going to be a number of windows of opportunity for the revolutionising of limitations, for the bending of rules as opposed to the breaking of them. And when you take this out of the personal and put it into a global situation, it could well be that as we get into the second week of May, we're going to see a number of global situations that in recent weeks have become intransigent and inflexible suddenly become a lot more flexible, adaptable, lucid and, and bendable. So there's, there's a potential there for quite a few breakthroughs. The full moon on the 23rd of May is at two, three degrees of Sagittarius. Now, this is going to be sextiling Pluto, trining Pluto. It's also going to be um, opposite Venus because it's a Sun-Venus conjunction at this time. So I have to view this in a positive way. It brings the opportunity for transformation, both financially and economically into the world. And this adds to what is seen during the whole of May. It's generally as a feel-good month. There's no big dramas. There's no big sudden new issues. All of the outer planets are playing ball with each other and most of the inner planets are being nice as well. Even the new and full moon are being flexible. But there's always the joker in the pack. And that's that Mars is in Aries and he's not touching anything else. So there's going to be random acts of stupidity and perhaps violence on a short term. Odd moments, odd days where one or two individuals are going to lose the plot. Apart from that, it seems a much quieter month than April. And as we look forward into June, it's looking relatively interesting. And the more we get into the end of May, the more I'm going to be doing a lot of new things online. I've, I've, I've done with my travels going around the world for the next few months, and I'm going to be staying at home, concentrating on catching up with a lot of my readings and doing things with my YouTube channel. So there's going to be some new membership issues. There's going to be some more flexibility around not only membership, but, but listings. And there'll be a lot more on this as we get into the end of the month. But meantime, May 2024, it looks like we're heading into a period of much greater stability and sanity. It's not going to be back to normal, but it's going to be a lot less quiet than April. So as far as May 2024 goes, folks, take a deep breath and know that the hardest time of the year is over. Catch you later. Bye now.